guys and welcome to Faywood. So this video is how to make a doormat um, with a custom saying on it or whatever you like really. Um, I really lusted after having this doormat that had a saying um, from Lord of the Rings where Gandalf is trying to um, enter under the um, caves, the dwarven caves, and it says speak friend and enter. So he was trying to work out how on earth to get through the caves and then realised that he needed to speak the elvish word for friend to use a font that came straight from Lord of the Rings and I had these you know Bilbo hand uh, fonts but they just didn't look right and the elvish you can't read as you can see um, and some of it was a bit too thin and everything like that so then I ended up just going randomly through all of the fonts that I have. Um, I recommend if you don't have a font that you like Go and have a look. There are some websites where you can either purchase or um, get free fonts and then just install them onto your computer and then you can use them in you know different programs like Photoshop. So I decided on this Celt uh, font and I really like the look of this one. I just needed to then adjust the spacing between the words and you know the size and everything. The file that I created in Photoshop is the exact measurements of the doormat and that helps me get an idea of you know, the exact layout. Um, and then I used a, a grid there as you can see just to get it spaced so that it was you know, right you know, smack dab in the centre. Now the tricky part was actually printing this at the correct um, size. So I don't know if any of you have tried printing um, a tiled print so that you can then piece it together for a poster, but it's not straightforward. <laughs> um, Photoshop didn't really want to play ball. It does have a tiled option, um, but I was finding it was sizing everything, you know, just ridiculously large, um, trying to make it fit all of the um, pages and I couldn't get it to the right size that I wanted. Um, or it would just print like one page and not and sort of crop the rest. So I gave up on Photoshop in the end and decided paint was better and there was a few sort of tips on how to do that so they do have a tiling option and um, you can put as you can see I've got the little cut marks so that's one of the options in there is you can put the little cut marks on there for you as well it did take me a couple of goes to get the right size but in the end um, it worked out really well and these are the prints as you can see So then I just started um, cutting off some of the parts because I needed to do that to be able to line everything up with the font and then just sticky taping that all together. Now I kept my design really plain, just the text, but you could obviously add some clip art, um, you know, you could add some Celtic knots or what have you in there. Um, I just really wanted it to be really just the statement and um, really plain, I guess. Now that's the brand of um, doormat that I bought. And if you're in Australia, you can get these from Bunnings. I found that these seem to be the best um, as far as the texture goes um, for, you know, painting on. Now, there was two different types of weaves that they had for this. You don't want anything that has, um, that's too deep. And I'll show you at the end the other um, option they had for this particular mat and it was a bit harder to get the paint to show and it, it worked but it didn't look as good so you'll get to see what I mean. 
So you can see I've lined up my um, paper and I've put it on top of um, some contact paper. You want a, just a piece of clear contact paper, making sure that it is large enough to um, you know, fit all the text and everything that you want. And I'm cutting through both the um, paper and the contact and I've just got a cutting mat underneath. Now when I started, I didn't think ahead and was cutting out the center of the letters. So you can see on the P, I cut out the center of the letter and then I, I had to then stick that center back into the P. Um, after I did that, I realized it'd be better to just keep the center of the letter attached somewhere to the um, rest of the paper instead of cutting it fully out. So you can see um, that like the E and the A, the center of those is staying there and that's just because there's a small tab of paper that I left connected and didn't cut out. Now it's a little fiddly but it does work out really well. If you are not sure how to do that, I would recommend just making some little markings on the letters before you go ahead and cut just to remind yourself where to cut so that you're not cutting the center of your letters out. Otherwise you'll have to hold on to those and work out which letter they came from, so it's just a bit messy. Now once I finished all of that cutting, I could then take the piece of paper off and just um, have the contact paper. Now this part's tricky and I recommend going very, very slowly. Um, you do need to be very careful when you're prying the back off the contact paper so that it doesn't end up in a little ball sticking to itself. Um, and the letters where you've left those little um, centers of the letters in there, the little tab parts, they're quite delicate. So just carefully pry it all free. Um, I pried just a little bit free first and stuck that to the mat. Um, I did have a bit of trouble getting it to stay there so I ended up putting some sticky tape to really hold it. And then just kept making sure it wasn't sticking to itself as I went. And then just really slowly prying that um, backing off it. Now it's really important that this is in place and stuck down as well as you can. So really just take some time to push everything down um, and make sure it's all stuck in place. Now I had some black enamel paint but you could use any sort of outdoor paint uh, for this. An acrylic sort of paint is perfect and I'm just using a rough brush um, like a stiff brush and I'm stamping that into the letters. And you might need to hold down certain parts as you do it, like the insides of the letters, um, just to make sure that they don't move about and everything and that your paint does go where it needs to go. Now I definitely recommend at least two coats. You can see the center of my P just kind of flew off there so I did take that off just in case paint smeared on anything and it moved around. And once you're done, let it dry of course and then peel this off. Now there will be a couple of little spots you'll have to touch up and I just used a Sharpie for that. 
So my pea got a little bit smooshed because of the middle of it flying around a bit. So I fixed that up and then I also just covered up where the little tabs were um, in the letters. And then just to make it look a bit more elvish, I put some little dots above some of the letters. And there you have it. So I'd like to welcome you friends to Speak Friend and Enter Faywood. I think Scooter approves. Thanks guys, thanks for tuning in. See you next time in Faywood.